Hi, my name is Doug Dedman. I'm the president and principal of DBM Systems. Welcome back to our series on quantifying the benefits for SNOP. In this series, I'm exploring some of the hard benefits that you should expect out of SNOP. The goal of this series is to help you understand how SNOP can deliver these expected benefits and provide a way for you to calculate the ROI of impl implementing SNOP for your organization. If you haven't already, go back and watch the first video in this series. The, the link is below. Um, and in that video, I introduce how generally SNOP can be linked to these business outcomes. I also in that video introduced an expected improvement table that comes from research by Tom Wallace. He's the author of the Sales and Operations Planning How-To Handbook. Based on his research, he presented a table that provided the high and low values for each of these benefits and an expected or middle outcome as well. I'm kind of using these as a basis uh, for the numbers that I'm going to walk through uh, for each one of these benefits. And today I'm going to look at expedited freight. So there are two main types of expedited freight, incoming expedited freight and outgoing expedited freight. Let's look at each and how SNOP will help you to reduce these costs. First, incoming expedited freight. This is freight that's paid to expedite components or materials in less than the standard lead time. This happens when there are shortages or changes to the plan that require you to expedite. I would put the reasons for this expediting into three main root causes. First, shortages due to poor quality. Second, shortages due to bad inventory records. And three, shortages due to planning or scheduling changes within lead time. It's primarily the last one that can be greatly improved through SNOP. In my intro video, I covered that a good SNOP process should drive supply predictability. A predictable process is one where there aren't a lot of changes introduced at the last minute. So how do we get to this point? First of all, you have to start with establishing accountability for the plan and the output of the plan. Measuring that output as part of SNOP compared to the plan and requiring a root cause when you're out of tolerance. Second, as part of SNOP, document your capability and make sure you aren't planning above that capability level. Third, you want to communicate the operating param parameters for the family across the organization. This includes capability and lead times. It also includes scheduling zones. When can the schedule be changed and by how much? This should be a standard part of an SNOP family presentation. Number four, link the SNOP plan to your master production schedule. The volume build plan should come directly from the SNOP process. And finally, you should use SNOP to extend your planning horizon to cover at least your cumulative supply chain lead time for the family. I recommend extending for a year to establish volume levels, but at least it should cover the longest lead time of your components. Working on these outputs from SNOP will drive reductions to that incoming expedited freight cost. Now, before showing the calculation, let's briefly look at the other one, which is the outgoing expedited freight. Outgoing expedited freight is when we have to ship product to customers through a non-standard method. Think about this as flying something to the customer versus shipping by truck. The same issues that I've talked about that impact predictability of supply will impact outgoing expedited freight. Unpredictable supply means we don't meet established promise dates and either ship late or we have to expedite to the customer. We can, however, add to this list and that we can add from the demand side. From the demand side, SNOP should involve establishing customer expected lead times and determining the buffers, inventory, upside, flex, and lead time, that must be established in order to meet this. These are strategic decisions driven out of the communication within the SNOP process. These parameters should be documented as part of the process and then adjusted again as part of the SNOP process in order to meet your strategic customer objectives. 
So now that you understand this, let's look at how do we determine the savings from reducing expedited freight. And so here's where I would start. First of all, determine what your expedited freight charges are. To give it a little bit more granularity, I do like to break it down between incoming and outgoing if possible and use an average of the last two or three years. For this example, I have a company that has $100 million in sales. Our expedited freight bill is about 1% of sales or about $1 million. This is split between incoming at 60% or 600,000 and 40% or 400,000 for outgoing. From my slightly modified Wallace table, I'm using a number around 20% or of 20%. This is in the middle of Tom's number um, and you can use something different for incoming versus outgoing depending on where most of your issues, but I'm an advocate to say, let's just start simple. So let's do the math. Multiplying that 600,000 by 20% gives me 120,000 in annual savings for incoming. And doing the same for that outgoing number gives me another 80,000 for a total annual savings of 200,000. Now, I typically like to time phase these returns over three years as it takes that amount of time to implement the process. And so I use an annual return for the first year of 20%, second year 80%, and third year 100% when the process is fully implemented. This would mean savings of 40,000 in year one, 160 in year two, and 200,000 in year three. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how the SNOP process can help reduce expedited freight. This single measurement may not be enough to justify SNOP for your organization, but added to the other ones covered in our other videos, hopefully this provides you a good starting point for linking the quantifiable returns you can achieve through SNOP. Stay tuned for the next videos to dig further into where else SNOP can bring significant benefits. Thanks for watching today's video. Subscribe to our channel for more on implementing SNOP. You can learn more about how DBM can take your process to the next level by visiting our website www.dbmsys.com. Thank you and take care.